Over here, I'm just going to start from the back and information I know. Um, had plenty of conversations and I feel like I kind of know a good overview. So out of the gate, it will come with the B mount. It is dual um, dual power output uh, input, so it's dual voltage. Um, if this connector looks familiar, the only one that's doing this as well is Aerie, which brings me to something I wanted to talk about. Is with the dual voltage, um, the camera wants 24 volts, essentially, especially if you want to start rigging it out. It will be able to take 12 volts, but then some of the frame rates will be limited. Um, they don't know what that is yet, but um, that is something to be aware of. So I would almost just say, okay, let's use just 24 volts. So just be aware of that. IDX makes 24 volts, Bebop 24 volts, dual voltage. All the major ones pretty much have dual voltage. But it will be able to get V-mount and gold mount later. And they, uh, V-mount and gold mount can have dual voltage too. So just be aware of that. Um, let's go to the side here. This is what everyone wants. It's hard to explain, but these new buttons are just awesome, and I love the green feedback. Um, it's just, I don't know, hard to explain, but super, super nice. All kind of the same shapes, but the button is just like a soft, nice button, and I don't know, I really like that. Uh, let's see. Even these are different. So these aren't like clicking, if that makes sense. Um, we'll stick to 5 ISO here. Um, let's see. ND, where are our ND filters? Right here now? Oh, ND. ND is up here now. Okay. ND filters on off. Now let's get into here, the side. And I wish you guys could feel the, the quality um, difference in the ways of uh, I don't know just the the build look how thick it's roughly with nothing on it no EVF no battery no nothing um, yes this on no lens it's about five pounds where the original Ursa Mini Pro 12k was around uh, three pounds or so so you're gonna have a lot you know it's 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 bigger now this mount can now turn around it, it stops, it can click in. You have all your menu here if you want. Um, now, if you notice, the software is different. The firmware is different on this than the Ursa Mini Pro 12K. So this is running the latest where I hope the Ursa Mini Pro 12K gets this update. I did ask them if the Ursa Mini Pro 12K would be getting this firmware and they said we're working on it so awesome this has gyro information this can do all of that now these are all very familiar now get to the module here um, this is your hard this is your card that is your media card you can tell it's pretty much just a big heat sink <laughs> keeping things cool but this is the only way you can get all of the frame rates at all resolutions is through that card and it feels so solid super solid now a little bit more about this I'll show you over here um, they do have another card slot a new module that has two CF Express type B but once you switch to two, uh, CFX, uh, once you switched to the Type B cards module, you won't be able to get all of the frame rates at resolutions. So be aware of that. Now, one question that I had was, how do you offload this? Because I don't know if I'm going to need that big three bay setup. Um, they thought of that. It it. I think they eventually, they, they didn't tell me this, but I think eventually they'll have to figure out a single bay dock or something for this.
because this is eight terabytes. The camera comes with this and it's eight terabytes. But through the eSATA, and this is what they're doing over there, eSATA over to a Thunderbolt connector, you can just offload directly and super, super easy. So there is an option for that. And if you don't need 12K at 100 frames a second or whatever, and you're using the CF Express, then you just use your CF Express Type B and you're good to go. So up on top, um, you have your dual XLR. These are your Wi-Fi connectors. The uh, XLR looks very similar to the 12K Pro. They're just closer. Um, like I said, ND filter now is right here. Um, it comes with EF and PL mount in the kit. So be aware of that. Now the new EVF is just incredible. I love that the simple to use, all the dampening is so nice. And the kit, you can actually program these buttons. So you can trigger record from the top, which is stinking awesome. Um, just, just a brilliant, brilliant design. Um, let's see here. Flip it to the other side. I don't want to put too much tension. So, now, this is awesome. You can take this whole setup off if you want. You can also turn this screen off if you want. I love that they have a focus marker here now that you could actually, like, put your uh, tape on and measure it out, right? Um, but one of the things is, is you can actually pull up your um, lens data and make your focus marks and you could see, um, let's see if I can. Let's see if I can get it. Slate. It's your menu. I don't know how to do it. Huh, we'll see. I don't know. Um, but one of the things that I think is kind of cool with this that I was thinking of was just the fact that, like, okay, I may not have an AC all the time. I'm, I'm alone a lot of the times. And doing documentaries, uh, you know, solo shooting a lot. Um, or, you know, product shoots and things like that. So, so do I even need this? Well, one of the things is I do interviews all the time. And so your interview... I thought, man, you could have your producer over here and then me over here. And, and, you know, the producer usually is on that dumb side. And then you have to get them a monitor or something. But now you can just, boom, you have the monitor built right in. So you don't need to bring another monitor technically. Uh, I actually never thought about that before, but that's pretty awesome. Um, this kit right here, this... This shoulder pad is part of their light series. It's an accessory, the Cine Light accessory kit, where the bigger one, see if I can find it. I'll go find it over here. Um, walk over here. This is what it comes with. That's what it comes with. So. Um, no, it is not because it's USB-C. It's USB-C. The viewfinder is USB-C, so it won't work with the other ones because it can't get an image from the other ones. So, but it should work with other... It does work with the... No, it does not work with the, the Cinema 6K, but it'll work with the Pixis 6K. So, yeah, it will not. But it should work with any camera that can send an image out from USB-C. Now, so this is, I'm gonna talk about just the kit that you get out of the gate. That's what it comes with, this kit, that shoulder rig, a uh, B-mount, and a Pelican case, and locking PL mount, and a locking EF mount. Let me show you those. So when you buy it, it comes with that. It comes with the M2 module, eight terabytes, that's the CF Express module. And it comes with PL and locking EF. Now, if you get an, a, an a B mount plate, 
and a nice custom Peli case. Now, if you get it with the EVF viewfinder kit with it, which the standard kit is five, uh, 15,999 and the bigger one is 17,000, 16,995. It comes with all of that, even the soft um, cap. So like the uh, eye cup. And then you could also get the light, see base plate, um, Black Magic Ursa City base plate 15. Like I said, that's the one that comes with it. And I'm loving these um, hand grips, awesome. Um, one thing that's nice too is if you look, they're switching kind of, look at, you got, uh, is that a two pin, either a two pin limo or a three, uh, four pin limo, I'm not sure. But this is a huge, huge step. I wanna show you the sensor real quick over here. And then, and then that'll be it for me, live here at least. Let me show you the, the sensor. Here is a quick look at just your sensors. This is the, they have no information on this, on the uh, Ursus Cine 17K, but this is the 17K, look at that sensor. Huge, boom. Here is your sensors of the current 12K lineup. There's the Ursa Mini Pro 12K sensor, Ursa Mini, oh sorry, Ursa Cine 12K, Ursa Cine 17. So there's 65 mil perf, 35, oh, I think actually it's not perf, I think it's like a three perf, but then there's 35 mil and super 35. Here is one thing to be aware of. They did not just turn the sensor and stitch them together. I asked them that specifically, did you just get this and turn it and stitch it? That's what Aries done, that's what uh, Red has done. Did they just get this, turn it, and stitch three of them together? No, they did not. These are brand new, one-off sensors that are not stitched together. Pretty dang impressive. It's very, very impressive. Each USB, there's a USB there, a USB there, and a USB on the back. Now the USB on the back, as of right now, it does nothing, but it will take SSDs and you can record SSDs externally. That SSD, I'm sorry, that USB-C, that USB-C, and this USB-C all take power out, 24 volts out, so you could power just everything on this thing. Um, and there's no difference in the body, uh, there's no difference between the 17 and the 12 besides the sensor. Um, so with that said, that means the power of this camera is overdone with the 12K. Does that make sense? It's over, overdeveloped. Because they weren't looking at making a camera that only lasts a year or two, but it needs to last a longevity. And that reminds me very much of Airy. Um, one thing I think, oh, thank you, Carl, thank you. One of the things that I think is cool about that is I asked them, well, wait a minute, what about the frame rates then at lower resolutions? Shouldn't this thing be able to do, you know, 4K at a thousand frames a second? You know what they said? Let's just start shipping the camera. <laughs> so who knows what's gonna happen? Um, yeah, just an amazing accomplishment.